This video comes about from a recent <laughs> series of videos that myself and Matthias Wandel did where we did various things here in my shop. One of those was to uh, test our long reach clamps. I tested this one right here and he tested his. The comparison was not quite uh, what you could call even because the parts of this clamp are actually made from smaller material than his are made from. So it really wasn't a fair comparison as far as that goes. I never did make any extraordinary claims about this clamp from the beginning. I didn't think it was that strong. Certainly it's not strong enough for serious clamping operations, but it is helpful to get in there. Say if you're doing a panel and you want to get some pressure in the middle, really doesn't have to be a whole lot. You just want to put some pressure in there to complement the clamps that go around the edge. And this could do it. So I made this one over here, basically finished it yesterday, and I gave it a try on this test rig right here. This is the very same setup that Matthias and I set up when he was here. So the results would match up to what we did with those. While we were doing that test, I did this one first and then I did one of my red clamps. The major problem with my red clamps is that they break because the notches are on the pull side. There's two forces at work in a clamp. There's compression on the outside and there's tension on the inside. You really don't want to have any breaks in the material on the tension side. Otherwise, it'll be more likely to rip apart. So I made this clamp um, after I made the red ones and that solves that problem. And I wanted to use this in the video, but I couldn't find it. It was actually hung up over there. And I grabbed the one that I made during the build video, which was not even glued together fully to use. And that instantly fell apart. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test this with this same contraption here and see how much force this can exert. Uh, the problem with this is there's a limit to the adjustment you can make so there's a bit of space there that I'm going to have to push down past. Now once I get this started I'm going to come around to the front and do it from there. Okay so that's one. That's two. Two and a half. There's some cracking sounds that I'm hearing, but I'm out of travel here now. That's the problem. Okay, I've added a block and I had to push this down a little bit to get it on there because it's a little bit thicker. Also, it's a little bit wider than would be ideal. I just grabbed what I could find here on the bench to do this. I really don't think that this width here makes that much of a difference to pushing this down anyway. So that's one. Two, three, four, and holding, four and a half, five. So this one will go to five, but I, once again, I'm out of travel, and I can see that the rod is bending. There was a little bit of a pop there. I don't see anything breaking, though, and that's the main thing. The next clamp that I have is this one right here. Um, I made this one quite a while ago. The beauty of this one is that it's infinitely adjustable because it relies on this threaded rod right here to index in and that stops it from moving back and whatnot. The threaded rod also uh, increases the strength of this clamp in the critical area, the tension area, where it's needed the most. So I'll get that in place. This one's not going to have to have a riser block or anything in there because, like I say, you can get it right down tight to the thing and lock it in place. Now this clamp um, is strong. I don't know if it's stronger than the one I just had on here, though. But we're about to find out how it compares. One two, three, getting very hard to turn now, four, five, 
five. It'll go e easily go past five. It's just it's very difficult to turn. And that's the problem with these small threaded rod clamps. Okay, so I'm gonna see. <clears throat> yeah, it's going, it'll make it to five and a half easily. And no signs of distress here whatsoever. Okay, I'm really pissed off here. At one point, I took the camera off the thing to take a picture and I forgot to plug in the microphone again. So all the rest of these don't have any audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the clamps that I'm using there and the key features. And you can watch to see what's happening on the screen as I'm testing them. Uh, this is my can twist clamp. The failure point on this one was here on this knuckle. That's the failure point from the beginning. I already tested this one, the failure before and made the improvements by adding these donut shaped things on here. And that made it stronger and it made it go to, I think it was three and a half. So that's not bad for a clamp like this. The next one was this so-called real bar clamp. And the problem that I had with this was making it lock onto this bar right here. It doesn't have any teeth filed in or anything like that. So it was relying on just jamming on there and it didn't, it never did work correctly. And then the last one is my uh, hybrid clamp. That's what I call this one. And I call it that because it's a mixture of metal and wood. The bar in the back here has teeth filed into it and a plate locks right into that. So that's an extra strong thing. As you can see in the video that it did apply quite a bit of force, but I never did make these. It's like these other ones, the blue ones here. I didn't make these for, you know, ultimate strength. I made them to be lightweight and easy to use and handy when you need to clamp something up to hold something on and you don't need a whole pile of force, which is, you know, appropriate for most glue ups. You don't need a whole lot of force when you're doing a glue up. And then the last one that I tried was the metal clamp. And of course you can put a lot of force with these clamps. I think it went almost up to six. It reached the end of the travel on my dial indicator anyway. So realistically clamps like this should be your main type. And that's what I use almost exclusively this type of clamp and then make some uh, homemade clamps to have as backups for those times when you need way more clamps than you actually have. It's really not much point having say 50 or 60 of these uh, because they would cost you quite a bit of money. And then most of the time they spend hanging around not being used. Originally I was going to test this clamp again, but since I already put it over five yesterday, I don't see the point. I, it did stretch out. It did open up. You can watch in the video where if you watch the top of it here and line it up with the window frame in the back, you can see how much it did lift up and open up. And of course it's going to do that. Every clamp like this will open up to a certain amount because that's a lot of force going on there. Anyway, I hope this was enlightening what I, what you heard of it anyway. And if you're interested in any of the projects or any of the clamps here, I have build projects on just about all of them on my website and there'll be links in the description. Before I go, I would just want to make a quick comparison between these two clamps and what the difference is between the two. First thing is I use thicker material for the arms and the backbone of the clamp. This one's made with flooring that's three quarters of an inch thick. I think it's actually a little bit less than three quarters. And it also has those grooves cut in there, which, you know, further weakens it. Also, the lead screw is three eighths of an inch thick. And the problem is when you get further down, it wants to bend here all over the place, which is not good. The uh, threaded rod I have in the spine on this one is quarter inch, and that's uh, strong enough, I think, for this clamp. But in this clamp over here, I used a three eighths inch threaded rod for the spine and a half inch threaded rod for the lead screw, and that doesn't bend at all. So a really good, strong combination right there. Mm -hmm.